Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Fantastic Four, Empire, Issue Zero. So this is one of the two prequels, the other one being the Avengers one. Uh, this was a freaking great Fantastic Four book. Holy crap. This is better than any of the Fantastic Four stuff that I've read from Slot so far. All, all that I read before from him, the little bit, I guess, considering how long he's been going now, has just made me say that I wish that he would just drop the book. But then I see this issue, I'm like, wait a second. But he knows how to write the Fantastic Four, so maybe I need to go back and start reading that. You know, if you guys watch Chillmonger, and why wouldn't you watch Chillmonger? He's also on YouTube. I'll try to remember to leave a link to him in the comment section below. Um, he's been reading the books, and I believe he's been reviewing them also. But he told me he's been loving what Slot's been doing in the book. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll have to check it out. Um, Thing finally gets rid of that vibranium cast that didn't last very long <laughs> you know what I'm saying they got from fighting the hulk i didn't like that i didn't like anything about it whatever it is what it is but uh this book this book was different this book gave me those fantastic four feels from back in the kirby and stan lee days you know uh hell even from the burn days you know Let, let's go back let's go back let's let's talk about who made this comic book and then i'll actually start telling you some things about the book in and of itself i don't think i'm going to go into spoiler territory but if i do I will give you that warning long in advance. All right. So the writer is Dan Slott. The artists are R.B. Silva and Sean Isaac. Uh, Isaacs. I believe it's Isaacs. Um, color artist is Marty Gracia and Marcio Menez. VCs Joe Caramagna on letters. And the cover art is by Jim Chung and Guru FX. The very covers... Actually, there's a bunch of them. I'm not going to get into all those. Carlos Lau, however, does the graphic design. All right. Uh, and of course, Lee and Kirby created these mother effers. Fantastic Four. So we've got a new character in here called uh, uh, the Profiteer, and she is one of the elders of the universe. She says that she's the sister of Grandmaster. Uh, I think that a lot of the elders of the universe consider themselves fam each other family. One of them actually does have a daughter, and I think it's stupid because the only way you can actually become an elder of the universe is by being the last of your race. Like, your planet is gone, the people are all gone, but you're the sole survivor. Which would technically make Galactus an elder of the universe, wouldn't it? Anyhow, um, unlike Galactus, who has the power cosmic, they have the power primordial. So they're ridiculously freaking powerful, you know? But all that being said, they have to have one particular goal in mind. And that's one of the things that also makes them an elder of the universe. And this one, the profiteer, she's all about making a profit. Yeah, it sounds like the most basic thing in the world, right? Anyway, so she owns this casino that the Grandmaster used to own, and it's it's actually pretty cool. I'm not complaining about this, <laughs> you know? Uh, Cosmic Casino? Hell yeah! The, <laughs> the Fantastic Four run into the problem that a lot of people complained about with the... Uh, the second from last Star Wars movie that came out, the uh, whatever the one, the, the one not done by J.J. Abrams, the other one, um, where they ran out of fuel and they were like, uh, people were like, why did they introduce uh, running out of fuel? We've never used fuel before. Actually, we have. Um, they always refuel when they go back to these docks. Han Solo was talking about in the original Star Wars movie, but hey, um, here they run out of fuel. It's like, we need to take a gas. <laughs> like, you, can, you can figure that, you know... Of all people in the world, Reed Richards wouldn't be dependent on fossil fuels. You know what I'm saying? Like, doesn't he have a... Like, this isn't a hybrid. He doesn't have the ability to say, Hey, solar panels, let's go, baby. Like, that... If I'm going to complain about anything in the comic book, that's going to be the thing I'm going to complain about. Like, dude, how booty is that? That he doesn't... That, that he's reliant on fossil fuels. Reed Richards? Relying on fossil fuels? Come on, man. Can we have something a little bit more believable than that? <laughs> So, so they they need to basically they they hire they they, they convince uh, Ben Grimm to get into the um, uh, some kind of a, a arena contest whatever to and that's not even the that's supposed to be like the plot of the story ish but then it takes a completely different direction which is what a lot of Fantastic Four comic books have always done in the past it starts out one way and then it finishes a different it's like oh well I didn't expect that. And it winds up being something cosmic. That's what usually winds up happening. And I have always dig on something like that. So in this story, basically, they come across the profiteer. And it turns out that she's the sole person in the universe who's trying to keep the Kree scroll war continuing. Because for the most part, they've come to peace. And uh, this has caused a lot of the... 
the currency, the credits, they're just called credits, the universal currency is now no longer uh, intact, so they're just using the barter system. I'm like, well, that's really weird. I'd like for them to give a better explanation of that, and I hope that they do. Slot can't just say this and then just let it go. No, 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 no. I will actually be very upset if, you know, you're going to introduce this and all of a sudden, psh, it's gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just a mention. No. Why did an entire currency end? That's a storyline in and of itself. And don't tell me the profiteer did that by herself. That doesn't make sense. One establishment, a, a gambling slash um, uh, gladi gladiatorial arena, I, I'm not buying that, you know? Um, but anyway, so she's keeping it alive by keeping these racial memories implanted in, in these different gladiators, them fighting each other, which is okay, I guess, but... I don't know. It's kind of a weak premise to begin with. It's like, you know, the, the, the thing getting into a fight with some people is going to be after the main event. Well, wouldn't that make it the main event? Whatever. I, I don't know. It's like it's like Hulk Hogan and The Rock fighting and then having the women's match and then the Jericho versus uh, Triple H match afterwards. Like, what? What are you doing? Anyway, so Ben Grimm and the Human Torch, of course, they can't stop because they realize that there's kids involved in this. They've actually got a scroll and a Cree child fighting each other. And it's like, that's just too much. This is reckless endangerment. Meanwhile, right outside, they're like, oh, you kids, uh, Valeria and, um, um, oh my God, Franklin. How do I forget Reed's, uh, Reed and Sue's kid's name? Anyway, uh, these two are like, oh no, we're carding you. Sorry, you're too young to come in. There's a baby Yoda coming in there, which is actually funny. A little bit, little tiny bit upset that Slot doesn't know that his name is actually Yiddle according to me. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's, it's a joke. Let it go. Just let that one go. I'm not mad at Slot for that. But Slot, it is Yiddle. So, um, so this is Baby Yoda coming, and then they're able to get in. It's like, if if they're so worried about it at the door, how come inside there's the hypocrisy there? I, I don't understand that. Anyway, um, so they have to stop these kids from fighting, and now we've got two new characters introduced, and they're on the front cover. So two new characters introduced. Hopefully they're going to be important, but there's new Elder of the Universe, there should be a lot of elders in the universe. There's there's not only one or two, you know, or ten species that have disappeared, and you know, what I'm saying there there's there should be millions, possibly billions of them. But anyway, a new elder of the universe. So three main, um, uh, for the most part, three main first appearances in this comic book. There's like the the truck driver or whatever, which he's probably not going to come to anything. Who cares? But three new characters in here. So this. You know, if you're going to look at key issues, boom, key issue right here, potentially. If you're a speculator, speculate away, baby. Here you go. Um, I like the way that Sue Storm really handled everything in here, and it wasn't some OP stuff. Uh, I dug on this, and it's the simplest thing in the world, but it was great. But there are also some really great Fantastic Four moments in here. The way that Benji talks about or to, and talks to some of the kids, like, you know, welcome to the FF and little things like that. Like, it was genuinely heartwarming. And this is the kind of stuff that I didn't think that Slot was capable of doing anymore, you know? Uh, like, he did several of them in the, the Spider-Man uh, run that he did, but I haven't seen it yet in the Fantastic Four, the ones that I've read at least. You know, you can go back and look at which ones I've done. Look up Fantastic Four Comic Book University and see which ones that I've reviewed. But the ones that I've seen, I haven't felt like any of them were a Fantastic Four book. This one, this felt like a Fantastic Four book, and I dig on that. And that's really all I could ask for. After that, yeah, I'm pretty much out. So you guys take it easy. Definitely consider getting this book. It's going to be part of a larger story. Remember, a whole bunch of tie-ins have just been dumped. I think 19 tie-ins have just been straight up dumped because there were way too many in the COVID thing. It's like people can't afford them. Don't worry, there's still going to be 21 more books to get it. Uh, only six of them are required. Then there's the two prequels and the, the two aftermath stories, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, but then aside from that, all the rest are just tie-ins, which that's a lot of freaking tie-ins. We'll see how important they are. And, uh, until the Captain Marvel ones, however, I'm sure are going to be very important, but I'm out. That's pretty much it for this. So I'll talk to you guys later. Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.